All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to our conversion to video of the uh, free ebook of Dr. Dave Regis of Chess Tactics, 10 Steps to Learn Chess Tactics. And uh, obviously um, aimed mainly at beginner players, newer players. And um, we're going to do forks today. So this is uh, one move ideas, forks. And a fork in chess is a double attack. So where a piece attacks more than one piece at a time. And then, of course, the uh, opponent can't protect, can't normally save both pieces. So we're going to do this seven games, uh, mostly from beginner games, junior games, uh, rather than grandmasters, of course. We get a few grandmaster games later in the series. Um, and our first one is Granatella against Power from 1995. But I can't quite work out from Dr. Dave's transcript from the book where this one was played. But it doesn't matter. Let's get to the key ideas. So e4 and e5. Uh, knight to f3, knight to f6. So Petrov's defense, as this is known, bishop to c4 is called the Urusov gambit, um, where white's just allowing black to take this pawn in the hope that um, they'll be able to develop really quickly and get an advantage. Um, OK, and it's perfectly playable, as you can see, but that's not what happens. Uh, D6 from black, knight to c3 from white. This is all pretty normal looking stuff for the most part. And then G6 from black, which isn't a very good move. That's a bit of a mistake, as you can see. It now says plus one because it um, is going to expose this pawn, uh, which is a common theme in beginner chess. It's well worth remembering. Two pieces attacking this pawn and the king is not much used as a defender because you can't put your king into danger. So white jumps on that and black has to do something about it because if the knight gets here supported by the bishop, we have our first fork of the game with the knight attacking the queen and the rook. And of course, a knight's worth three, the rook's worth five and the queen's worth nine. So white's definitely gonna be happier with any exchange there. So um, black does the second best move in this position and blocks the bishop from protecting f7. So, OK, that's what happens. Bishop to e6 and white goes pawn grabbing as you would. Bishop takes, pawn takes and knight takes. So white is a pawn up. Here it is. I'm flashing the square. This pawn is an extra pawn for white. And... Um, so, but this isn't where the, the killer fork is in this game. Um, Black plays queen to e7 just to kick the knight away, and the knight's got to go somewhere. And there's various places it can go. The best move for white here is knight to d5, which attacks the queen. And just because we're on a theme of forks, knight to d5, if the queen takes this knight, knight takes c7 is check and is attacking the queen. So that's rather jolly. If you're playing white, you're happy with that. You've won a queen. And of course, if uh, knight takes, pawn takes, well, this knight is then rock solid, c6, c4. And uh, yeah, this is going to be really difficult to move. So white's really quite happy with life. Uh, but that's not what actually happened in the game. In the game, white set a little bit of a different trap and played knight to b5. Perfectly OK move, as you can see, just not the best. And is aiming at this square. Both the knights are now pointing at this square. And black doesn't notice what's going on here, plays knight takes e4, and in the game, knight e takes c7, check. Now you can't play queen takes knight, well you can, but knight takes and uh, you've won a queen and you've still got this fork, whoops, this fork here. And if you don't play uh, take the knight, let's say you move the king, well, um, knight takes a8 and you've just won a whole rook and yet lots of pieces up. So that's um, pretty nasty. And it's worth saying that at the beginning of a game, I'll put the new analysis board up, you do need to be very careful of these two squares in particular, because they're only protected by a king. And um, the power of defensive power of the king is a little shaky. Um, you know, if you lose your king, you lose the game. So F2 and F7 are very, very shaky. And in fact, C7 can be as, and C2 can be as well, because the queen isn't going to want to be getting into an exchanging contest with bishops and knights because she's worth nine and they're only worth three. So watching out for this square in particular. So our second game, uh, we've got Walker and Havel. So this is from a juniors match uh, down in uh, 
Devon, I think it's Devon, uh, 1995, so in the south of England, and we've got e4 and e5, knight to f3 and knight to c6, knight to c3 and knight to f6, so four knights opening, nothing wrong with that. Bishop c4 played by white, and uh, black plays, uh, sorry, I've lost my place in the book. Yeah, bishop c5 from black. This is all very normal looking stuff. People are just developing pieces, whatever, d6, d3, fine, bishop e6, um, bishop takes, pawn takes, bishop g5, d5 from black, queen to d2, I would think, d4 is now a quite a nice move for black i'd be very tempted to put that but that's not what happened in the game black's ninth move is queen to e7 which uh is perhaps not the best of moves as you can see from the bar and white plays pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn from black and now we've got a tactical theme but it isn't really the one that we're doing here because uh the tactical theme is this knight is pinned it can't move because the bishop takes queen. So white's able to play knight takes d5. But it's not the fork of the knight and the queen and the pawn that is the key point here. Black has to get rid of the queen because otherwise knight takes queen's quite good. And black puts it on completely the wrong square. Black plays queen to e6. And um, yeah, that kind of runs into the same problem as in the previous game because now we have knight here, this pawn's unprotected. Not only is it check, it's attacking the queen and just for good measure, attacking the rook. It's what's called a family fork in check. So the knight attacks three pieces at once. Ouch, very, very nasty to be on the end of that. And when the computer analysis says plus 12, you know you're in some trouble. Okay, let's go with uh, the new analysis board and get to our next game. And uh, I think I'm going to turn for this one, I'm going to turn the computer analysis off so that you can have a go at finding uh, what's happening at the end. So we have uh, Head against Bladek, 1996. So E4, to turn that off for a minute, E5. And Knight to F3 and Knight to C6. Bishop to C4, Knight to F6. D4, E takes D4 and knight g5, bishop to b4 check, bishop d2, bishop takes, knight takes, and d6. So um, hopefully you're spotting the reason why the eval evaluation bar has now gone up to plus two, but if you'd like to spot the correct next move for white, feel free to hit pause. It uh, should be reasonably straightforward, but as I say, for completely new players, maybe not, uh, maybe it'll be a little more tricky. So press pause now and uh, if you want to, otherwise I'll carry on in three, two and one. And the point is, is if you remember in the previous videos, it was this square that was the weak one. But this one is, of course, far weaker because it's only defended by the king. And so after knight takes f7, the knight is forking the queen and the rook. It's not really important that it's forking the pawn because the pawn's defended, it doesn't matter. Uh, but it's forking the queen and the rook. And you can't play king takes knight, see it won't let me, because the knight has some support in the shape of a friend, he's protected by the bishop. So black has to do something, black will have to get the queen out of danger. And then you just end up with knight takes rook. So white has won material and has won, won the exchange, a rook for a knight. Um, in the actual game, uh, black played bishop to g4 in that position. But after f3, white uh, was winning and black resigned because now we're attacking the bishop and the knight and the rook. And uh, it's just uh, not a good position for black at all. So, okay well worth just if i put this back watch out for a junior level chess what's going on up here by the way um i wonder what the computer suggests is there a way out of this for black maybe castles no okay. excuse me sorry in this position maybe castles yeah yeah so instead of moving the pawn forward and not seeing this problem if black castles 
well, now this is no great threat because rook takes, bishop takes, king takes, and actually it's black who's got the extra material because a rook and a pawn that's been taken is worth much the same as a bishop and a knight. Okay, let's get a new board and get on to the next one. So this one is going back to 1801, and we've got Giovanni Greco, who is a very famous early master chess player, uh, but against NN, and what NN means in chess game, in chess books, is no name, so we don't know who the opponent was. So let's have a little look at this very, very quick game. So E4, uh, E5. I will turn the lines off. We can use that when we need it. Knight to F3 and D6. So the perfectly okay Philidor's defense. H3 is a slightly strange move from white. It's not awful. It does stop the black bishop coming here. It's, it's, you know, it's not an awful move. It's just odd. Knight to F6 and C3. White's setting up a trap here. Knight takes E4. This pawn isn't defended. So black goes a pawn grabbing and yet the eval bar now says plus two give or take to white so again have a little bit of a look if you want to just work out what the correct move here is for white just press pause otherwise i'll carry on in three two and one and the point here is this knight isn't defended and undefended pieces can be very susceptible to forks in this case the move is queen to a4 which is check Black must deal with the check. Let's say they put the bishop in the way. And now the queen is free to capture the knight. Black has lost a knight worth three and has only captured a pawn that's worth one. So big advantage to white. Now, I'm just going to tick the positions that I've done in the book as we go. Uh, OK, so we've got three well three and a bit to go there's a little bonus uh, thing at the end of this section as well from the good dr dave so our next one we've got morgado against schmetan 1968 and this is a correspondence game so this is one of those where we seem to have quite a big mistake even though the players were playing by letter so you think they would have enough time wouldn't you to look at a chessboard and not make too many mistakes. So let's see what happens in this one. It's uh, Petrov's defense, knight takes e5, d6, knight f3, knight takes e4, and then c4 is a slightly unusual move in that position, but it's not awful. Okay, it's just more normal to play d4, but okay. d5 from black, pawn takes pawn, bishop to f5, knight to c3 and bishop to c5 from black so white has to do something because there's a knight and a bishop both pointing at this vulnerable square but as you can probably tell uh, from the evaluation bar uh, there is a pretty good move for white um, have a little look and see if you can find what the best move here is for white Hopefully by now you've spotted the theme. And uh, if you want to try and solve it, press pause. Otherwise, I'll carry on in three, two and one. Uh, OK, knight takes knight. So that has put white a whole piece up. There's an extra knight here that black doesn't have. Black can recapture it. But do we remember the pattern from the previous game? The bishop isn't defended. So queen to a4 is check. Black must do something to get out of check. And then the queen will mop up the bishop. So let's just say black plays queen to d7. Queen takes bishop check. And white is a full bishop ahead. And should be much better because they're a piece up. Okay. Let's move on to our next one. And analysis board, there we go. So what have we got here? We've got Wall against Bell, 1979, North Carolina. So, okay, let's go for it. E4 and E5. Knight to F3, Knight to C6. Bishop to C4, Knight G to E7. I'm just looking to see if the eval bar makes any dent there. And it says it's a bit better for white, but not shatteringly so and knight to g5 so here we go again looking for this 
this uh, pattern here, and d5 from black, blocking it. Pawn takes from white, knight takes from black, and knight takes f7. So one way or the other, by hook or by crook, we've got ourselves into the infamous fried liver attack. This is an absolute carnage of an opening. So sharp, so tactical. Um, yeah, I don't wanna, I wouldn't get involved in it. It's far, far too complicated. Uh, but these two players did, king takes. And so although it looks like black is currently a piece up, uh, look at the state of their king exposed in the middle of the board. It's very, very, very dangerous. And the computer does say slight advantage for white. Queen to f3 is played. And in this position, in this game, uh, the black plays king to e8. Now, I'll go back to that in a sec with the computer, because I don't know loads about the fried liver, but I think you have to actually play king e6. And the reason is simple enough. Bishop takes here. And then queen to e7 from black. And you should see the eval bar shoot up. Yeah. So in this position, White slightly better, but OK, the game goes on. After queen to e7, there is a huge advantage for white. Look at that, it's plus six. So if you want to work out the correct next white move to set up some sort of double attack uh, by a piece on two black pieces, feel free. Otherwise, uh, I will carry on in three, two and one. And this time the correct move is bishop takes knight. And that's check. So white's won their piece back. In fact, they've won an entire piece. They're a whole piece up. Look, they've got an extra knight. If black plays pawn takes bishop, queen takes pawn is now check. Black will get out of check and white will pick up the rook. So white has won a lot of material. Um, I just, for the sake of interest, want to go back here and just pop the computer on. I think you have to actually play king e6 here. Yeah, king e6 is the top move, yeah. Which is just, can you imagine having your king stuck in the middle of the board like this on move eight? And of course, the knight is pinned. That's a tactic. So you're going to bring this knight out and attack it for a third time. And it's just, just horrid, just a horrid, horrid position to have to defend. So I um, suggest trying to avoid playing on the black side of the fried liver attack. OK, uh, our next one for there is called uh, Dr. Dave gives each of these little puzzles in his book titles. This one is called a checklist fork. So whatever we're doing here, there's not going to be a check involved. And we have Svensson against Borman, another correspondence game, 1986. All right, let's see how this goes. So E4, E5. Oh, let's turn the lines back off for the minute. Knight to f3 and f5. Fabulous. We've got the Latvian gambit. It's one of my favourite openings, uh, even though it's definitely better for white if white knows what they're doing, but it's quite good fun. Uh, knight takes e5, queen to f6. So this is pretty much mainline Latvian gambit. Good, good. d4 and d6. Knight to c4. Oh, black's about to do something a little unusual. b5. Interesting idea. Computer doesn't think a great deal of it. Look, knight to e3. And a6, I don't know what the computer will make of that. Yeah, not a lot. The computer's not impressed with a6. Um, getting off topic, but if you're going to play the Latvian gambit, you need to be trying to develop very, very quickly. And I'm not sure that moves like a6 are really going to do it. I don't know, maybe c6 is better, maybe. Yeah, c6 slightly better in that position, yeah. Anyway, um, what gets played? I've lost my spot again, talking away like that. Yeah, so a6 is played. And pawn takes f5 from white. And fine, black plays bishop takes f5. What could be more natural? After all, the queen is defending the bishop, right? Okay. Well, let's see what happens here in this position. See if you can find a deadly fork that white can play here. This is a bit more tricky to find, but uh, have a go. Press pause. And otherwise, I will carry on in three, two, and one. So this bishop is attacked at the minute by the knight, but the queen does defend. But this rook isn't protected by anything. And that might give a clue as to the move. And the move is queen to f3. And from there, the queen is attacking the rook, but is also helping the attack on the bishop. So now the bishop is hit by two pieces and only defended by one. And uh, I'm afraid for black, there's no way to defend both 
pieces, I imagine the computer will say the best move is probably C6 or D5. Yeah, C6. Uh, blocking the attack to the rook. But of course, that doesn't save the bishop. Queen takes, queen takes, knight takes. And you can now see white has a full extra bishop. So there's just some examples of double attacks in the openings. Of course, you can do this at any stage in the game, but double attacks, forks can occur at any stage. And there's just one bonus thing on this page from Dr. Day, which isn't a game as such, but he just a little, um, he wants to just show you a little pattern. And he writes, here is a very common idea. Black does not gain any material, but gets a fine free game by this trick. So we'll just put it on the board, e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6. Let's turn the lines off for a sec. Bishop to c4, knight f6. Knight to c3 uh, from white. And black can in this position and in similar positions play knight takes e4. And I think this may have come up in the intro video, actually. Um, it's not that it's winning. Look, the position's still level enough. But after knight takes, pawn takes is actually just another kind of fork. It's a pawn fork. And you can't really, well, you could play, yeah, you kind of have to play bishop takes, actually. Um, but the queen is defending. I assume the computer will say bishop. Uh, okay, it wants to do it a different way. So the computer's clever, it says bishop here, pawn takes, bishop takes. Presumably bishop takes, yeah. Um, but it's just a little trick that you can use for black in the in the opening sometimes. Of course, you can occasionally get the same thing as white, but just uh, with the pieces the other way around. Okay, so that is it uh, for the forks. Um, all done, short and sweet. And in the next video, we'll be moving on to pins and skewers. But I think there's 12 games with that section. So I'll divide that into two lots of six, as we don't want these videos getting too long, do we? All right, that'll do for today. Thanks to Dr. Dave for letting us do this with his book. And thanks to you for watching. See you next time.